Hey there, Alan Matthews here. This video is all about fingernails. On the right hand, on the classical guitar, we oftentimes use our nails. Now, some people don't want to use nails. I have students who do not have nails because they are writers or programmers that are surgeons and they can't have nails because of the gloves, they rip through the gloves, things like that. That's fine. If you want to not use nails, then don't use nails. And it's perfectly fine. Loot technique, actually, in the back in the day, they didn't use nails um, because with the gut strings and the inferior filing and polishing products they had, it sounded really scratchy and bad back then. Now we have great technology. We can have beautiful sounding nails. And so it's kind of a moot point. If you want nails, then go with the nails. They sound great on the guitar. If you don't want nails, don't trouble yourself with it. Just don't play with them. Skip this video and go to something more interesting. However, if you're gonna have nails, this is the place because I'm gonna go through everything I have come to find out about nails. We'll talk about shaping nails. We'll talk about how to care for nails, polishing the sound that we want from the nails, things like this. What this will do for you is to get your sound much more beautiful. It's much more compelling. It'll give you more tonal variety, so you can make very bright sounds, very dark sounds, very mellow sounds, so it enables you to be more expressive in your playing, which is really motivating because then it can make your guitar sound the best that it possibly can, which then makes us wanna practice and makes us wanna spend more time doing it because it's rewarding. We're actually getting good sounds coming back at us. So, let's dive in to fingernails. So the thing with nails is there are a lot of, there's a lot of varying information on this. What I've found to be the case that's worked for me is to really let form follow function. So examine how the strings are activated, how the fingers activate the strings, to say that in, a, in an active sentence. Look at how the fingers activate the strings. Whenever we're sitting here like this, they activate the strings at an angle not straight up and down, but at an angle, right? And if you just press on your strings like this, then you'll find some little marks on the ends of your fingers. There'll be some little marks in those little angles. And so what happens is that we play the string and then move through the string and, so it's, and then it's wrapping on that nail and that nail is just activating it into a circle, the string. Did that make any sense? So we wanna make that string activate very round, in a very round way. If we snag it, then the string goes back and forth like this, and that's not a pretty sound, it's very sharp. It's not a very good tone. We want a nice big round, a warm sound. So with your file, and I like just these little metal files right here. I know that some people uh, you've used the big four-sided puffy files with all the different type of textures and everything, just a good old fashioned metal file works really well for me. So the way that we're gonna do this now, a couple of things. What I've, I've seen a lot of people do is, for one thing, they'll just kind of start shaping it. Just start maybe uh, take a little off the sides like this and then just round off the top so that this kind of makes it into a point. That doesn't really make for good sound. It's, it's cosmetically very nice because it's symmetrical and everything else but it's not really that great for sound. What we wanna do is put, the put your finger on the file at a 45 degree angle, more or less, like this right here. So now I'm coming into the file like this right here at a 45 degree angle because this is, kind of, this is how my, um, I activate my string, is at a 45 degree angle. And so now, whenever you file, one of the, a good way, of course it's, I'm doing it so that I'm facing you, but I'll be normally facing myself. A good way to do it is to put your elbows on a table and do this, and then move the file itself. And so if you're doing that, then you put the f your fingers to the file at a 45 degree angle, and you put the file under your fingernail also at a 45 degree angle. So you're not perpendicular to your nail like this, and then just taking off on the sides. You're actually coming at an angle underneath your uh, fingernail, like this right here, and then you just lightly go back and forth, moving your left hand, keeping your right hand or your nail hand still, instead of just holding the file and going gug, 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 and grinding on it. Then use, do it this way. Now, if you'll notice, 
what you want is for there to be a nice plane, like a nice flat plane. If there's anything catching it, like if you have a, a hook or something like that, or if it's, it's catching on something, you want to take that off. What you'll end up doing then is kind of having a roundedness. It'll, it'll slant from one side to the next. In other words, it'll be longer on the pinky side of your finger than it will be on the thumb side of your finger. And that's perfectly fine. Then you can just round off that top, come along underneath the other side to make sure there's no catches or anything like that that's going to create a hangnail and rip that nail off. Same thing on this side. And you want the nail to come down basically to, the, to where it meets the flesh. So in other words, if your nails are this long, you're going to have a hard time playing that. So you want it to, at the, at the side over here, then you want it to come down basically to where it meets, it meets the finger. Into the, into the, what is that, the quick, I guess, it, it meets in the corner, anyway. And you do that for the, fir, the eye finger and for the M finger. And so you, you do both of those and you can sit there and, and do this. And so at a 45 degree angle and at a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle like this under this, under the, under the nail so that you're filing into the nail at a 45, but then also at an angle to the, the finger at a 45 degree angle like this right here. And then just rounding off the sides. For the A finger, that's for the I and the M. For the A finger, I go a lot straighter on. I go more perpendicular with the A finger. And it doesn't totally play perpendicular to the string or anything like that, but I just find that it, it sounds good that way. So then you would just go perpendicular, still at a 45 degree angle to the file like this. The file's straight up in space right now, so I'm coming into the file at a 45 degree angle, filing up into it like this, and then just take off any off of the sides that comes into, that, that catches on it, so that then you have a nice flat. That you should have a lot of nail on the file when, when you do this. The thumbnail is the exact same thing. 45 degree angle, like that right there to the file. File straight up, so 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle underneath, and the thumb can be longer. Look at that thumbnail. Big old fat, long thumbnail. So, and then you can just, just go around very lightly if you'd like to and just catch any burrs or ridges in the nail with the thing. At the end as well, you can just do one light stripe across the top if you'd like to on these nails just to get any kind of rough edges off or anything like that. So that's the basic shaping of the nails. For polishing the nails, I use a paper, and you could use any kind of, there's tons of different kind of paper. I use this right here. This is a, uh, a 3M product. They have it at stringsbymail.com. Uh, I think Guitar Salon has it as well. You can get it in different places. Yeah, hypothetically, you could get it in any hardware store, but you can't. You can't find it that, that often. But there's the, um, it's this open coat stuff. I think it's made for automotive use, maybe. So I just take a sheet of this. And then I rip off a piece, a stripe of it, about this big. And then this I'll have. I'll have one of these in my case. I'll have it in my pocket all the time. You could just, you know, take this as well and just put this in your, in your bag or your notebook, the whole piece. It just seems a little bit large to me. So I just take it, fold it up so that you have a nice thick hard edge and then go same, same type of thing underneath the nail and you can just kind of grind it go on top of the nail just grind it in there all over the place and just get all so we're just polishing now you go on top go underneath get the corners and everything and what this will give you is a glass like finish it's very smooth it's very glassy and um, and so you can do this for all of your fingers and then what you'll have is a really nice warm sound as opposed to really really sharp it's going to be a trial and error um, process with you you're going to wonder what well, did i take enough off is it short enough is it is it long enough what's going on typically it'll be there are different thoughts on this let me grab my file here there are different thoughts on this that you should whenever you 
put your file up to your fingernail, it should be at a particular angle where it meets your finger and everything. That It depends on, I think, on the type of finger you have. Some people have really fleshy tips and so then they need a longer nail. Some people have very thin tips and they're virtually no tip and it's very, there's, it's just like comes right back. That's not, you're not going to need as much nail. So, you know, one thing, a couple of things I've read, a sixteenth of an inch maybe, if you were to look at your hand like this, the sixteenth of an inch, my A finger is a little bit longer generally than the I and the M. And actually, typically, the I is one length, the M is a little bit longer than the I, and the A is a little bit longer than the M. And so they actually get longer as you go toward the pinky. The pinky doesn't have to be longer than the other ones, but as far as the AMI, I is the shortest, M is second, A is the longest of the three. And so they need to be just a little bit longer as they go up the fingers. Okay, so that's a bunch of stuff on nails right there. Remember, this is kind of a, this is a process. You're going to sometimes mess up your nails. You're going to file them too short sometimes. Sometimes they're going to be too long and you're not going to really know it and then you'll wonder if, if you file them, if they'll go too short. Don't worry about it. Just keep experimenting with time. You will dial it in. You'll find the right length. Then they'll grow a little bit and you'll wonder what that right length was again. It's an ongoing process. But just keep with it and keep listening and letting your ear be your guide and just tinker with it and you'll have a great, a great time and you'll play absolutely lovely music, beautiful music every single day that you practice. Okay, enjoy that and have a good one. Bye-bye.